This week on Across the Arrowverse, Supergirl is falling out with Alex, The Flash is falling out with Ralph, Oliver's falling out with John, and the Legends are playing nicely with their villain. across the universe. I'm Matthew Vose. And I'm Catherine Kay. This week we are going to be talking about Supergirl for Good, The Legends of Tomorrow guest starring John Noble, The Flash, Null and Annoyed, and Arrow, Brothers in Arms. Um, so kicking off with Supergirl, they captured Julie. Julie? Maybe Julie. Julie, Julia. Julia, Julia Freeman. Yeah. Um, they captured Julia. She's more Julie than Julie's. She's Julia. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> um, they capture her. She turns into purity. She eventually gets out and gets rescued. Alex deals with some of her emotions. And we have the possibility that Lena has seen that Rain is possibly inside. Sam, that nice stinger at the end. Oh, yes, yes, mm. yes. Yeah. It felt like not a lot happened. If I'm honest. I also felt they were just kind of spinning their wheels a little bit. Mm. I think that's why I don't have a very strong memory of the episode. Yeah. I remember, it's all right. I think they were very heavily getting that thing, the, the idea that we've talked about with, it's the person inside Rain that is going to save her in the end, possibly through her daughter. Yes. So we're yeah. seeing that a lot with Julia and Purity and the differences there, so... I think I'm a little bit confused on exactly what the world killers are from a biological sense. I don't think we know yet. Yeah, I okay. think they're Kryptonian, but not necessarily biological Kryptonians. Yeah, because it's like... Some sort of genetic... Did, did someone hijack... Is this like Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yeah. Did they hijack a real human person and just kind Maybe of... Maybe so. Are, are they essentially like the Trill? Yeah, could be. Hmm. Yeah. Good, good DS9 reference. Very I have good. I've been watching a yeah, lot of yeah. DS9 recently. Bonus points to you. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo-hoo>, I win. <laughs> so, no, so this was, I think, setting pieces on the board a bit more. So, we're beginning to understand each other. And, and I can see it's been very useful for the DEO to find out more about how to find Rain. Yeah. So, we, we're going to move into that part of the season where they know who she is. So, she's become a, a legitimate threat. Mm. without the weirdness of all and what's going on with Sam. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What I didn't mention was the plot with Monel and Imra and uh John Johns giving Monel advice on his marriage. Yeah. Which is not something we've seen from John and I'm not sure would have happened in any other episode except everyone else was busy with their own plot. Yeah. <laughs> Given how much he tries to stay out of their personal relationships. I was a little confused by it. I mm. thought they were um in love. Yeah. I, I appreciate getting a bit of backstory, and it was never going to be a simple backstory no, in these true. shows. Um, so so it, it was a nice way to work that in, but it just felt it was plot of the week for them. Suddenly, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. So, But it does also give us that other stinger that she's going to tell them what their real mission is. Uh, yeah. So I'm hoping there's something quite exciting coming from that soon. Yes, me too. Because mm. I have been curious. Yeah. It's not quite hung together. Yeah, you've been questioning the time travel and the, yeah. the exactly why they're there. And now we're going to get something more, yeah. which I'm not sure if it's going to have anything to do with Rain or Supergirl. No. Or whether I, it's a different thing. I don't think it is because I remember when they were trying not to get involved. Mm. They seemed to be quite like, yeah, yeah, they, they're going to get through this. It's fine. Yeah. As, or, if, or as did if they... this was part of the historical timeline that they yeah. knew this was well, going to happen. Were they having to wait for the other world killers to show up? And now they are. Now they can start moving into their phase of it. Oh, maybe. 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 Um, Arrow, Brothers in Arms. Um, Miserable, shouty, shouty, miserable. Yeah. So uh, this feels like an arrow of earlier in the season because we had... Oliver not really being good with people. We had, I couldn't quite follow John's thing with this, and it was it. It's him being led very much by Lila. Lila, Lila, 
Lila. 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 It's Mrs. <laughs> er indoors. Mrs. John. Er indoors yeah, in yeah. Argus. Argos. <laughs> Argos, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, he'd go and talk to her. She'd then tell him what he's thinking. He then goes and says that back to Oliver and they have a fight. And that happened two or three times throughout the episode. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit miserable. I, I'm interested to see where this takes us. Is this that the the actor is leaving the show, which I could believe? Yeah. Um, is it this is going to set up something of the New World Order about what's going on with all the teams and all the different things? Mm. Like, are we moving into, uh, post this season, the Arrow bit of the universe will look a bit different? Maybe. Maybe and hopefully. I, I, yeah, I must say, I, I hope so, because quite frankly, I do not go to my superhero TV to watch everyone be miserable and shout at each other. Yeah. I'm I'm a little bit surprised John didn't go and join Team B. That mm. was what I felt like that was heading towards. Would, would he have been welcome if he did go and join Team B? I don't know, but I would have been interested to yeah. see something in that. Because I could see that then leading to more conflict as he goes to join Team B and then essentially is like, hey, I'm the really experienced vigilante. Mm. I should be in charge. And they're like, no, do one, mate. Yeah. I wondered if it was going to be like uh, he goes and they do make him the leader. They say, no, we trust you, so we will follow your judgment. And then he gets one of them killed or in even worse mm. trouble and they go, actually, we can see why why we did this in the past. Yeah. What do you think Renee is up to at the moment? Because we, we we found out this evening what Roy Harper was up to. We did. Um. <laughs> so we saw Colton Haynes in Rough Night as a male stripper. Um, and that is now headcanon that that was Roy Harper going off Arrow, doing that for a bit and then coming back in. Um, what do we think Renee's doing? I don't know what the actor's doing. I haven't seen him in anything. I, I just assume the actor is doing something. Mm. Didn't really finish with any cliffhangers or anything setting up. So it's not even left me feeling like stuff coming. There's the impeaching of John, but John is always in some sort of double I- identity secret thing going is, on. Is he not virtually being impeached at the yeah. moment anyway? I mean, like, how is this making it any worse? Yeah, the, the political story of Arrow is not the interesting story. No. So. It also, if I, uh, well, I suppose it... There's no employment law in the States, is there? Mm. <laughs> hey, I sack you. And I'm I'm being sacked, but before I'm fully sacked, I'm going to sack a whole load of other people. That's not quite how HR would treat that in the but UK. But yeah, like the point at which they were sacked, they were sacked. They yeah. shouldn't have had recourse to go and do anything more at that point, so... No, no, you, you, you get a window of opportunity of half an hour to sack a whole load of other yeah. people. You know, yeah. that, that's how you play the game. Finish your affairs. Like, mm. no, anyway. I don't think so. Um... So The Flash, Null and Annoyed, uh, is quite a good episode title. When I saw that, I, I thought, I don't quite see what they're going for. But as it went on, and we have the new bus meta, Null, and then we have them being annoyed at Ralph. Yeah. I quite like that. I, I can yeah, see yeah. what they were going for. Um, Kevin Smith helmed this episode. I think it showed. I think there was a confidence in some of what the show was doing. Right. Because it was doing some fairly grand plots. The, the movement forward of Cisco and Gypsy's father. Yep. It was a small bit of it, but they actually did that very well. Yeah, I thought it was nice. Mm. I, I liked that little that little subplot. And I liked Cisco's agonising over how to deal with him. It's like he knows that he's not got a horrendous relationship with this man, but he's still kind of scared of him. Yes. And he doesn't... And, and, and it's... Um, I think, again, it sort of reinforced, even though we don't see Gypsy very much, it reinforced that Cisco does have some very strong emotions towards Gypsy. Yeah, and, and they've sort of excused it that they're not seeing each other, not because they don't want to. Yes. So, Just hopefully. Just because she's so yeah. busy. Mm. But, yeah, and, and, it, and it might be that it's time for Cisco's life to change. Mm. I don't know how that would... I don't know how his continued participation in the series would work, or if he would have a continuing participation in the series... But I, I can see him taking up that job offer. I, I can see it going two ways. One, he leaves the series and yeah. becomes an occasional guest star, which, fine, and I could understand that and accept that. Yeah. But I could also see it going that this is how they expand the the Flash part, again, Flash part of the, the universe after this season, is they're actually dealing across multiple Earths via him running that agency. Yeah, because... Otherwise, I mean, it would seem very much like, well, like in Arrow. Mm. Everything happens to this one place. Yeah, yeah. 
You'd that, be better off without a superhero it, if all that happens is that all the bad stuff is attracted to your city. There, there is an argument for that. So you see it almost more in Batman, yeah, where people go after him because he's Batman and they want to show themselves as the strongest, so they take him down. So it's like without Batman, they wouldn't have been compelled to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, and in Arrow, it's just this constant: we want to take over Star City. Why? It's not very nice. <laughs> and it's probably totally shell shocked, and the economy's in the down doldrums. Yeah, because people keep trying to destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> Meh. Um. So we had that part of the story. We had uh, Ralph dealing with the inappropriate humour and getting freed up to do his own thing. That they're making him more and more part of this team. Yes. And every week, I'm almost surprised they're exploring another facet of him. I. They're really, really setting him up nicely, and. I, and quite well. Mm. I I am happy now to see more and more of Ralph. Whereas yeah. when he was first introduced, I was a little bit like, eh, no, no, not sure. We I like did not this want guy. him on the team. Yeah. And now now he's good. To the extent that I had a shameful snigger at his um, <laughs> the human cushion whoopee joke. cushion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, we had the introduction of Null. Uh-huh. As our new meta, which we don't know what's actually happened to her since. She's been captured, so I don't know if she's in the prison, if she's going to work with them. She's in the pipeline for the moment. Oh, we do, she? Did yeah, she yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah, okay. that? She's in the pipeline. Okay. Unhappily so. Yeah, because, so they, you know, they've got pipe, her. Yeah. <laughs> their pipeline where they have no, no means of feeding them or letting yeah. them go to the toilet. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> um, I like the Flash being leader again a bit, but actually appreciating, no, I should give people a bit more rain mm. to do things. Um, it's a nice contrast with how Dark Arrow is um, dealing with the team there. Yeah, but it, but it did also show the strain that they're under. Because mm. I think I think that's, I was about to say, kind of realistic, but in a way it's kind <laughs> of realistic that, that people's people's characters and their get stretched to breaking point when they're under extreme stress. Yeah. And, 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 and I thought actually, you know, Barry trying to control everything... Mm-hmm. And and that leading to rows and actually things, you know, it 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 played out very nicely. It was yeah. a it was a nice, well written, believable, mm. emotional interplay between the characters. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's the team has come together very well. Yeah. Uh, Joe and Iris had to take a bit of a back seat this week mm. because we had so many plots going on. But even they were there to do some supporting and carrying things. So I was like, what Iris did in terms of coaching Barry through mm. his um his leadership. Issues, yeah, was very nicely done. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Joe, the character didn't get much to do, but Joe, the actor, got to do a very fun bit yeah. with that Scottish guy, which I don't quite know why he was so heavily Scottish. Um, I did appreciate the way that was portrayed to be. It is Joe, but it's a sillier version of Joe, yeah. and it felt almost like yes, I can see this is Ralph's take on what Joe is like. Do you think the actor that plays Joe? got some hints and tips on how to do that from the actor that plays Harrison Wells. Oh, maybe. I, I would imagine he probably spent some time with the guy who plays Ralph. Yeah. To be, okay, how would you play this scene if you were playing my character? Yeah. And then he, he got himself into doing that. Yeah. You'd like to think. Yes. Hmm. Um, We also had the plots of um DeVoe, and particularly DeVoe's wife. Mm. Very interestingly handled uh, with her realising that the Weeper is affecting her and that power is is stopping her from breaking out. And then it turns out she's done all this before. That is a really good science fiction twist. That is the yes. twist at the end of The Matrix Part 2. Right. That That is what they then find out. Oh, he's actually the fifth one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and has to make a decision. It was really quite creepy. And... And that that side of things is starting to fall into place better for me now. Mm, because yeah. I've always been thinking, she's going to realise he's actually a complete psycho. Mm. She's going to want to get away. But how can she get away when he can plan everything and he can read yep. her mind? Well, there you go. Yeah. This, this, this is how that genuinely does play out. Because yeah. I was will, willing, ready to be a little bit sort of disbelieving that in whatever happened, but actually yeah. now I'm like, no, no, you have not disappointed me. Yeah, um, totally agree. They have now earned when that happens, which we've seen coming. Yeah, but it's now, yeah, we can see it. He no, he no longer looks at her or considers her in the same way. Yeah, definitely not an equal. No, uh, which which they did at the early part of the season, which is why it was always going to be strange. Mm. But now, yes, it's there and it's set up and it's very well done. 
Um, and throughout the episode, we had um, Harrison Wells using his thinking cap, which was just an ongoing thing. So mm-hmm. fine. And, and using it more and more and more and more. And then a twist at the end of him going to Gideon. Th- there's a hint there that he is not who we think he is or there's something going on. I suspect all it's going to be is he wants Gideon's help to make the thinking cap better. I I am slightly equating the use of the thinking cap to uh, performance in, addictive mm. performance enhancing drugs. Mm. And actually he's sort of that. Yeah. spiralling down into a deeper pit of addiction. Mm. Which... Right. It could be this is the setup for another future villain or something else to happen with him. It would be interesting to see where that goes to. I'm hoping it's going to be more interesting than just they're misleading us with why he's there. Yes, because we've had too many Scooby Doo moments in the past in yeah. Flash for that to be something that's yeah. a welcome surprise anymore. It's it's a little cheap. Yes, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. And yet, despite that, so we we've got a lot of different plots and threads moving forward, and this is why I think I was saying it it was very confidently done. We also had Jay and Silent Bob in this episode. (laughs) And we had the moment with them floating off into the atmosphere and the rescue of the guy in the car. There was a lot going on in this episode, but I didn't come away from it feeling like, oh, I didn't follow that. No, no, it was was very well told. It Mm. had a clear theme, clear narrative, and it was fun. It was a very good episode. Yeah, really solid. So uh, the fact that there were so many cliffhangers at the end, it's going to be very interesting to see where the next few episodes take Mm, us. Looking forward to it. Yeah, there's some really good stuff set up in in Flash. Yep. And then finally, Legends of Tomorrow, the episode titled Guest Starring John Noble. (laughs) I didn't realise it was John Noble playing Malice. No, I had no idea. Hadn't clocked it at all. Hadn't even thought it. Um, But looking into it, so uh, just in case anyone's listening without watching or, or being aware... John Noble plays the voice of Malice, the demon, in Nora's head. He also played Denethor in the Lord of the Rings films, and they want to f- be fake Malice in this, so they go back in time to the filming of the Lord of the Rings films and give him a new script and record him doing it, with the actor actually appearing on screen recording those moments with him. That's very good. It was so much fun. That is a deep-cut joke that I'm hoping they had planned from the beginning. I mean, it, it it makes it. I think if I'd realised they would, we would have had a point of like, oh, they're going to try and record him. But because I'd never realised when we finally got mm. there, yeah, it's very, very clever. Nice. Mm, that's a good setup. But at the same time, so we had that as almost only a small part of the episode. But we had Grodd turning up again. Yeah. Um, and and trying to kill Barack Obama, <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I I wasn't entirely sure about that. I just, cool. I mean. It somehow feels a little disrespectful. <laughs> just, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I think what they did with the character is okay. Yes. In the end. Um, and and it, it is them leaning very heavily into their uh, sort of left-wing liberal state. Yes. Left-wing? Yes. Left-wing. left-wing. Um, the, the, the very liberal state that they are fully supportive of the Democrats. So he is the greatest president in, in modern times. So killing him would be such an aberration. It would free malice. Yeah. But... That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. But then we had the twist that we only saw coming from last week of it's Damien Dark who turns on them, mm. which is very interesting. Yeah. Or, or not, not who turns on them, who turns to them for help. So because he wants to save Nora, he goes and helps them Yeah, try to take her down. But then he turns on them as well. Mm. I mean, I... I yeah. I, I like what they're doing with Damien Dart this season. Yeah. Part of me is a little bit sad that he then turned on them again, but actually it would have slightly broken the Damien Dart character to have him be a bit like uh, Rory and just be like, hey, yeah. I'm now, now I'm hanging with the good kids, because yeah. actually he's done too much bad in the past yeah, for that I can't to be allowed. see he's... him joining the team no. next season. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, um, but yes, that they have... They have weirdly made his character endearing. Mm, very, very well done all the way through. Yeah. He was, he was, his interactions was, with Sarah were better than they've ever been. Yeah. Where normally it's just been, okay, a bit of verbal sparring and then they're going to fight. Kind of bored now. This was much better. This was much more solid writing for them too. Yeah. Uh, for the two of them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice. Um, I, I did think the way they talk about him and, and the fact her vengeance against him is the killing of Laurel. It's almost like his only sin is killing Laurel. If he hadn't done that, he'd be okay. 
And it's like, no, 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 he, yeah. he's killed a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, they sort of wipe out everything he's done. Yeah. And, and uh, perhaps it's because that's the only thing they've really referenced in um, Legends. But in Arrow, he was very dark. Yeah. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like proper horrid. Yeah. So um, alongside that, we had Amaya and her daughter and her granddaughter and the dealing with the totems. There was and, a lot in that episode. Well, this is there? where we're going to come to. Yeah, her going back to when they were wiped out to try and get her daughter to help. And eventually they got there. I, I think the show is giving up caring about the timeline largely. It's trying to make things better and, mm. and finding ways around them. But then to change it with Grodd coming and attacking as well was, okay, so I, I don't quite get where all this is stepping to and going to. and Because the, the uh, result of all of that in the very end was, and now we've lost Nora and Malice is free. Yeah. So what would have been the point of... What, yeah. yeah, Grodd's not changed anything. No. Well, he, he has changed things because there is now an aberration. But the aberration is Grodd attacking rather than them being saved. Yeah, as I was say, because there's always going to be an aberration. Yeah. So God just was a different aberration. Yeah, so I don't... No. Nah. Nah. I think they were just like, hey, we've got the gorilla technology this episode, let's use it again. Yeah, we set him up, you know, Chekhov's squad earlier in the season. <laughs> um, and alongside that, we had Ava dealing with her knowledge of her being a clone and the fact that she is the 12th Ava mm, and confronting dark. Rip about it. And I quite liked some of his justification. He wanted someone capable and strong, so we turned to the Avas. And has programmed them to be capable and strong. Yeah. It's not good for her, but I, I can understand his reasoning. I can. I still have issues with the way they're using a year in the time as mm. if it's a place. Yeah. Hey, you just go to like 2023 or whatever it is and go <laughs> yeah. get some clones. Yeah. Because they only exist in that one year. I just I don't know. It'd be interesting. I, I suspect there's more coming with the Ava story. Yes. I'm just not sure it's coming next week. Yeah, because we've only got one more episode, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to wrap up. So so this episode had a lot going on. We had a lot of different things happening all the way through, with with some good lines, with some jokey humour, but I felt like there was a lot going on. Yes. I felt like... And, and the fact that by the time we got to the finale piece with Grodd attacking and Amaya and Amaya's daughter and all that, I'm not quite following who's doing what and why, whereas Flash, it just seemed effortless. Do you think they always knew they were going to have such a short season? Or do you think this overarching plot was actually designed to be written over two or three more episodes? Possibly. I suspect they knew it was going to be shorter yeah. because of the way it's been scheduled with Supergirl and so on. So, Because I, I think Legends has generally been shorter yeah. for each season. Um, so I don't know, to be honest yeah. with you. I, it It's possible, given what happened with Discovery, it might have been it was going to be even shorter. Right. So how many episodes have we got? 15, 18? Something like that. So maybe it was, they thought they were going to get 15 and they got 18. Mm. So then they went, oh, we need three more episodes. So we've ended up with slightly more plot in some of them than we expected. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. But it's proper busy. Yes. Yeah, we, I think we're going to probably focus a lot on Legends next week. Yeah. Um, and look at that, which... Because everything else is still setting up some of the further plots, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure there is much to discuss in general, except for like Flash is very good, so we can talk about it being very good. But I'm happy to spend a lot of time to talk, talking Legends, yeah. how the seasons performed, and and whether this change for the second half has, has carried on and what we see coming of it. Mm. I think that'll be quite interesting to talk about. Yeah, great. I agree. So that wraps us up for another week. If you have thoughts, questions or comments, you can use the hashtag ATAV on Twitter. Or you can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram as Eloquent Gushing. If you want to help support us, please check out our Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive content across all our shows. Go to patreon.com slash Eloquent Gushing. And don't forget to visit the homepage, eloquentgushing.com, where you can find the other shows across the network and subscribe to our weekly newsletter with all the goings on. Thanks for listening and we'll see you across the Arrowverse. Across the Arrowverse is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more shows you'll love, please visit eloquentgushing.com.